at some four ways as is mentioned this problem is a significantly more challenging version of problem 81 you can also go through this to understand what was the easier version of this problem in the 5 by 5 matrix well path sum from top left bottom right left right up and down is created in bold red equal to 97 so the top left most cell the starting point and we need to go to the bottom right cell in the movement allowed left right up and down dividend from the red cells are marked in the grid if we follow this path end up at rightmost some cell uh, minimum sum between all the possible paths is uh, given as line 7 and uh, using the similar steps we need to find the minimal path sum from the top left to the bottom right by moving left right up and down in a matrix which is different from the given one this was just a sample sample problem and it is a 80 by 80 matrix and we need to find the minimum path sum from top left to bottom right following four directional movements and without hitting the same cell again so it's obvious that it is always better not to visit any cell again because it will increase the answer and we want to find the path with minimal sum so it's always better to find the path without visiting any vertex twice and in general it is also not allowed so let's look at some of the observations uh, it is clearly stated that each cell should be visited at most once and the path should be from top left to bottom right so we can simply think of some dynamic programming approach we will start off with the left or top left cell and each time we have up to four choices to go up left and down or right and for each of those choices we are going to eventually find the path with minimum sum the best case would be whenever we arrive at the bottom right corner but there is a caveat to this approach because uh, the movements uh, enforce a cycle so if we start at 0 comma 0 top left cell go right down left and then again up we are eventually and we will eventually end up at the same cell that we started so this dynamic programming solution will not work because it does not form a directed acyclic graph for its states hence whenever there is a cycle between the states that we are going to traverse in the dynamic programming solution the dp approach is not going to work so what can we do if dp is not going to work so one, one thing to notice is that we can treat the grid as a graph so each cell is considered as a node in the graph and there will be some edges we need to traverse from one node to the other so the starting node will be top left cell and the ending node will be bottom right cell or bottom right node and we need to traverse some path in this graph such that the sum of the edges is minimum so as i wrote here a path in this graph will be our path in the grid with some starting and ending cells so this is one observation so let's also look at how we are going to convert our grid into a graph so we have a 3 by 3 grid for as an example so let's see how each cell is represented as a node graph so we have 3 by 3 means 9 nodes and if we treat each cell as a node we are eventually going to end up with 9 nodes uh, they are currently independent don't have any edges we are going to look how the edges will be added so this is how the conversion of cells to graph node is going to look like next uh, let's look at how we can add the edges and how to traverse this graph 
and one more thing to notice is the node with number one is the starting cell and node with number nine is the ending cell we need to find some path in this graph with the constant that we are going to enforce in this is that the uh, values present in this single cell are going to be represented somewhere in this graph and problem that of traversing a grid is going to be modeled in terms of graph problem so let's see how the edges are going to look like so any edge any node in this graph is a single cell and the directed edge from that cell or that node to other node will denote the value that needs to be added in our path sum that we are going to minimize so if we are currently at node 5 and we have four choices as mentioned in the problem left right up and down and if we are going to traverse from 5 to 6 we are going to add an edge between 5 and 6 uh, in general we are going to add all possible edges so one will add only two edges from uh, to the right and to bottom bottom node and uh, after adding all the edges for all the nodes present in this graph we are going to end up having a lot of edges between neighboring nodes so each node connects to each of its neighbors at most four directions and eventually we are going to end up with a graph with a lot of connections between interconnected nodes and now let's also look at what the edge weights are going to look like so suppose we are at node 1 and we add an edge from 1 to 2 so we will say that that edge has a weight of 2 which will be the value present in the node to which we are traversing it. so similarly if we are traversing from 1 to 4 this edge will have a value 4 and if you are traversing from 1 to 4 uh, sorry from 4 to 1 then that edge will have value 1 so 5 to 4 will have value 4 5 to 2 will have value 2 and 5 to 6 will have value 6 and this is not directly the value 6 but the value in the cell of the matrix which this node belongs to so in general the grid representation will have the coordinates of uh, 1 1 1 2 1 3 uh, then 2 1 2 2 2 3 and 3 1 3 2 and 3 3 and eventually going to we are sequentially converting them into node ids from 1 to n square but the values of these edges will be the cell value that is present in the matrix for this location so the main idea is to add an edge from cell ij to ninj so suppose ij is at node 5 and ninj will be node 6 to 4 and 8 then we are going to have an have added we will have we will have to add four edges we, each of them will have these weights for different coordinates neighboring coordinates ni and ng so this is how we are going to convert the entire grid into the problem statement there we have asked to model as and uh, i have not added all the edges here because it it will it would have cluttered the diagram so each adjacent nodes uh, in the direction left right up down will have directed edge from one to other so 5 to 8 will also have edge and 8 to 5 will also have an edge if it different edge widths so this is the main idea so let's also look at how this is going to help us solve the problem uh, so basic idea is that we have a starting node which is node 1 and an ending node which is node 9 and we are going to traverse the path in this graph from node 1 to node 9 and the path sum or the edge weight sum is minimum so the main algorithm that can help us solve this is Dijkstra's algorithm which is going to find the shortest path 
from one node to one node to the other so in this case our starting node is node 1 and ending node is node 9 so we'll start the diagonal algorithm with the starting node as 1 and it will eventually give us the shortest distances from node 1 to every other node and we can we can simply take the answer from node 9 and update the thing so that is the main idea uh, create the graph add the edge widths accordingly and uh, run dijkstra's algorithm from starting node and find the distance minimum distance from starting node to the ending node let's also have one more observation which is so let's say we are we have constructed this graph uh, for now let's assume that other edges don't exist so that we can see what path is to be considered so if we start at node 1 and if we traverse this path from 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 6 and 6 to 9 we have we'll have a path sum as 2 plus 3 plus 6 plus 9 and we can see that this path sum has uh, accounted 2 in its uh, sum uh, 3 in its sum 6 in its sum and 9 in its sum but it hasn't accounted 1 in its sum which is expected in the question so as you can see if we add add, add edges from any starting to the neighboring node then the starting node is not considered so what we can do is we can know this for now because it will eventually be considered in all possible sums so we can find out the uh, answer that is written by Dijkstra's algorithm for no, uh, ending node as 9 and we can add the value for the starting cell after the value that is written from the Dijkstra's function so as I mentioned Dijkstra's algorithm will give us the length of the shortest path in this graph excluding the starting cell so we can account that in separately and print the answer because this will be added in everything so subtracting this from all possible choices and then adding it won't uh, affect the uh, sum that we are minimizing in general so that is one case for that needs to be handled next look let's look at time complexity they have given us a graph of no 80 nodes so we have n equals to 80 nodes and we are going to add up to 4n edges in this graph because each node will have at most 4 neighbors the uppermost row will have uh, 2 or 3 neighbors uh, similar to the boundary nodes but the middle ones will have up to 4 neighbors so I have assumed that we have up to 4n edges and the Dijkstra's algorithm runs in time complexity m log n and the total time complexity to solve this will be o of m log n you can substitute the values and check for that but it is essentially pretty fast yeah so this is all about it we can also go through the solution once again to understand it in brief we uh, notice that dynamic programming cannot be applied because there is a cycle in the recurrence state that we are going to visit one after the other and we scrap the dynamic programming approach we model the grid as a graph we have as many nodes as there are the number of cells in the grid given then we add edges between each pair of neighboring nodes then we add edge weights between them which are going to be the destination cells value in the grid so 5 to 6 will have, have the edge from 5 to 6 will have the value present at cell 6 in the grid and then we run the extra algorithm from the starting node and it will going it is going to return us the shortest path from that source node to all possible nodes so we can simply grab the values for the ending node and um, there was one caveat that we missed that the starting cells value was not considered in the path sum so we'll add it in the answer later and account to it separately and we also saw that the time complexity to solve this is m log n so yeah that's it about this summary if you have any doubts do let me know in the comments i will surely answer to them now let's look at the implementation in c++ uh, yeah, i have defined some constants 100 this can be at most 80 but to be sure just i've used 100 nodes uh, 
then we have g which is the adjacency list for weighted graphs so whenever we have weighted graphs so we have a g of i denoting the adjacency list for the ith node or node named i and the adjacency list is a vector of pairs the first one is the node to which we are going and the second one is the weight of that edge that we are going so i to j will have a weight of uh, the second parameter that is present in this pair this matrix is the input matrix that is given to us then we have number of nodes which is 80 then dx and dy are going to represent the directions that we are going to move to from current cell so as you can see anywhere we move downwards the x coordinate increases y coordinate remains same we move upward x coordinate decreases y remains same and similarly for left and right you can uh, determine from this then i have also declared a function boolean inside which is going to return true if that coordinate lies in the cell boundaries then i have this function to convert cell coordinates i j into a singular value that we saw in this so as we saw here converted the cell coordinates 0 comma 1 to 2 and so on for all the cells so the function that is going to convert or give us the node number for a particular coordinate of this cell is this function so what it essentially does is um, let's say we want to find out the node for this and it is currently at jth column so it has counted this many nodes or this many number of nodes in current the current row and previously it will have i minus row in them and for each of them it will have n columns so for the previous i minus one rows it will have this many edges or this many nodes or sequence from one to that number and we are going to add the value from the current node current rows starting number to the ending number so that we are going to arrive at this formula so uh, in the implementation i have used one best indexing so you can change the implementation accordingly so essentially we are simply changing the nodes or cells value to a singular single variable form instead of considering the coordinates as xi or xj or xi and y we are simply assigning a, a unique number to all the nodes that is the function we'll go through this dijkstra afterwards essentially we have 80 nodes we are going to input them from the standard input i have transformed transformed the input which was comma separated earlier i have changed it to space separated and essentially we are going to read each row from the standard input and uh, create our matrix input matrix then we are going to add edges so let's look over the logic for that we are going to iterate over all the coordinates in this matrix and we are going to add an edge from all the uh, to all the neighboring cells to find out the neighboring cell from i to j we are going to add the dx and dy constants that we saw earlier for each of the four directions we are also going to check whether it lies inside so that we don't consider the neighboring cells which are outside our grid boundaries this is the condition for that next we find out what is the node id for the current cell uh, for the function that we saw earlier which was the mapping function so you and we will return the index of node in the graph so essentially it is going to convert this uh, 1 comma 0 to 4 and uh, we know that we need to create this graph from that node to the other one uh, u is the starting node which is ij and v is the neighboring node to which we are going at so adding an edge in the adjacency list is same as adding the appending a uh, entry in the adjacency list of node u by pushing the pair uh, in which the first value is the node to which we are going at and the second one is the edge weight so as we saw in the explanation part we are going to add edges where the edge weight is the value in the grids coordinate to which we are going at and we are since we are going from i to j uh, ij to ni nj so we are adding the edge weight as 
matrix matrix is cell value at position n i n n j so this essentially will going to prepare the essential list for our graph and afterwards we are going to find out the node which is the starting point from and to which is the ending node so essentially uh, we are starting at node 1 comma 1 top left node or grid value and we are going to find out the shortest distance in the graph to the node with coordinates n and n which is 80 comma 80 and this is the distance matrix that we need to pass to the dijkstra's function we are also going to pass the source node so that dijkstra finds out all the shortest shortest distances from this node to all the other nodes in the graph and distance is the value of vector for all the nodes it is going to re uh, change it in in place so that after calling this function all the values are populated in this vector and as we saw earlier the dijkstra's or graph approach is not going to consider the starting cells value so we are going to add it to the answer after the implementation is computed and the final answer will be printed to the output the dijkstra implementation is fairly straightforward you can also use any other implementation as you like so s is the starting cell source vertex and it is the distance vector to be updated in place that is why it is taken as a reference uh, the star starting cells distance will be zero and we have uh, usually use a priority queue and, uh, and we are going to start with the starting node with the distance zero the first value is going to denote the shortest distance from source to the node that we are currently at or any node that is present in this queue and each time what we are going to do is take out the smallest node with the smallest value in this queue and update its neighbors and this is the main logic for dijkstra's algorithm you can go through this in general which is out of the scope for this video so that's what that is going to give us the solution for this problem i hope this is clear it was a pretty challenging problem if you haven't studied graphs earlier but i hope it was educational for you and see you next time thank you